In this step, we will create three bodies and give them each a different color as the base for our parts. Make sure you are in the Part Design app. In the Structure toolbar, use the Body command to create three new bodies. Right-click the first body and select Properties. Under the Feature Properties tab change the name to the one shown in the text. Next, under the Graphic tab change the color to help distinguish it from the other bodies. Use the More Colors to find different options. Click OK to confirm the changes. Repeat the procedure for the second and third bodies as well. The names will be automatically used when the bodies are copied to new parts, that's the reason for changing the names. In this step we will create the initial geometry for the front spar, using a sketch and a pad. Ensure that the first body created in the previous step, is the in-work object. Create a position sketch on the XY plane. Show the wing planform geometrical set and then hide the airfoil and wing surface geometrical sets to make the sketching easier. Use the Profile tool to create two lines, the first being vertical and the second following the leading edge. Remember to double-click when creating the last point to end the profile. Make the endpoints coincident with the wing platform. Add the dimensional constraints to the lines. Remember to check that your sketch is ISO constrained. And then exit the sketch when you are done. Create a pad using the sketch. In the warning message click yes. Now select the thin option to be able to specify the width of the spar. For the limits we will use the wing surface, so unhide the geometrical set if you hit it while sketching. For the first limit, use the Up to Surface option, and then select the wing surface as the limit. Keep the offset as 0 mm. Repeat the procedure for the second limit as well. Set the thickness 1 to 50 mm and ensure that the material is added towards the trailing edge. Click OK to create the pad. As you can see, due to the limits used, the pad has the same curvature as the wing surface. If you look at the end of the spar, it is not flush with the end of the wing. This is due to the angle of the spar and the way the pad is defined, so we will use a draft to correct it. In the Refine toolbar, click the Draft command. Ensure the constant option is selected and set the angle to 0 degrees. Use the end face of the spar as the face to draft. Use the front face of the spar as the neutral element. Use the YZ plane as the pulling direction. Click OK to create the draft. As you can see the face of the spar is now parallel to the tip of the wing. In this step, we will fill at some of the edges of the spar, so that when we make the spar a thin-walled structure using the shell command, the inside edges will also be rounded. In the Refine toolbar, click the Edge Fillet command. Select the four edges shown in the geometry. Set the radius to 10 mm. Click OK to create the fillets. In this step we will make the spar a thin-walled structure using the shell command. This command removes material from the selected faces and applies a uniform thickness at the remaining sides. In the model toolbar, click the shell command. Select the two end faces and the two back faces as the faces to remove. Set the inside thickness to 4 mm. 
Click OK to create the shell. As you can see, the spar is now C-shaped and has a constant thickness of 4 mm. The inside edges are also rounded due to the edge fillets. In this step we will create some planes to split the wing surface so that it is the correct size. There are many ways to create planes, we will use the offset from plane and the parallel through point options. Ensure that the wing surface geometrical set is the in-work object, as planes are made as wireframe geometry and must be stored in a geometrical set. In the Essentials toolbar, click the plane command. Ensure that the offset from plane option is selected. Use the ZX plane as reference. Set the offset to 700 mm in the positive Y direction. Click OK to create the first plane. Create a second plane, this time with the parallel through point option. Use the YZ plane as reference. Now, find the sketch used for the rear spar in the model and unhide it. Select the end point of the sketch as the point. Click OK to create the second plane. In this step, we will thicken the surface of the wing to give it a volume. Ensure that the last body created is the in-work object. In the model toolbar, click the Thick Surface command. Select the wing surface as the object to offset. Ensure that the first offset is 1 mm. Check that the offset direction is pointing to the outside of the wing. Click OK to create the thick surface. In this step, we will see how to split a body to remove unwanted sections of it. In this case the spars start at the midsection of the fuselage, and thus the wing skin is not needed in this section. We will also cut the trailing edge of the skin, as this is normally the location of the movable devices such as the ailerons. In the Transform toolbar, click the Split command. Select the first plane created before, as the splitting element. Ensure that the direction is pointing to the section to keep. Click OK to create the split. Repeat the procedure with the second plane created. This time ensure that the direction of the split is towards the leading edge to keep the front section of the wing. In this step we will create the separate parts for the spars and convert this part into an assembly. In the Tools toolbar, click the Distribute command. In the Dialog window, keep the Associativity as the With Links option. In the Preview table, use the X next to the names and remove all the rows, except for the two spars and the wing skin. Click OK to distribute the bodies to new parts. Hide the original bodies and geometrical sets in the 3D shape so that there is no overlapping geometry. As you can see the part has become an assembly, and the bodies have been copied to new parts. The small green symbol shows that the part is linked to the previous body.